Hello everybody, my name is Diana Lopez and I'm a local author from here in Corpus Christi. Uh, some of the books that I've written, uh, I, I love to write for young readers and I have several books. Uh, one of them is called Confetti Girl, it's a story that takes place here in Corpus Christi. Uh, and it's called Confetti Girl because one of the characters has a cascarones making obsession. Uh, I have another book called Nothing Up My Sleeve, and that book is about three boys who love um, close-up magic, and they decide that they're going to compete, and of course only one person can win a competition, so this competition kind of throws a wrench in their friendship. Uh, and a third book I've written is called Lucky Luna. That one also takes place in Corpus Christi, and it is about a girl who has so many primas, so many cousins. And if you have a lot of cousins, you know that some of them are your best friends and some of them really get on your nerves. And so it's a little bit about her adventures with all of her primas. Um, ever since I was very young, I knew that I wanted to write. I loved writing in a journal and just talking about my day, what was happening. Uh, and today I'm gonna to talk about uh, my newest book. But before I get started, I'd like to invite you. I have a, um, on my website classroom page, I have uh, some reproducible activities. And I'd like for you to think about what do you wanna be when you grow up? And draw a picture of it. Maybe you wanna be a writer like me, um, maybe you want to be a famous pastry chef, or maybe you want to be a nurse, or maybe you want to be someone who drives 18-wheelers down the road. Whatever you want to be, I'd like to invite you to draw a picture of it. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk about my latest book. It's called Sing With Me, the story of Selena Quintanilla. She is also somebody who is from Corpus Christi, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to write about her. And I wanna share that this book was translated into Spanish. Uh, the Spanish version is called Canta Conmigo. Uh, so if you wanna read uh, the Spanish version, I invite you to get that. And I wanna thank Carmen Tafoya for doing a wonderful job of translating it. Uh, and it was illustrated by Teresa Martinez. And so when you have a picture book, it's kind of a cooperation between the writer and the illustrator. I wrote the words and Teresa Martinez drew the pictures. So I thought I would share with you some of the uh, story uh, in this book. So I'm gonna read to you for a little bit. Selena Quintanilla rolled a tortilla and lifted it to her mouth only to use it as a microphone. She turned everything into a microphone. Spoons, crayons, toothbrushes. But instead of scolding her, her parents hummed while her brother and sister tapped their feet. The Quintanillas were always together, siempre juntos, and they were always united by music. One day, her father announced, we should start a band. Selena jumped up and down. What a great idea. And I love this picture in the book because this shows us Selena, her family had a restaurant, Capapagayos, and um, the, that's where Selena first started to sing in front of an audience. And if you look at this picture, you can see her right here. She's a very young girl when she starts to sing. And the other thing I love about this picture is that you have old people and young people, and you have people enjoying their meals, and you have people dancing, and even the waiters are very interested in the music that Selena is singing. So I love this picture for, for all of those reasons, but also because you see that she's here with her brother, her sister, and her father. So it was a very much a family band. Uh, so Selena kept singing, first at the restaurant, and when she was 10 years old, they moved to Corpus Christi. And uh, shortly after that, they used their last dollars to buy a bus, which they named Big Bertha. And they drove to Houston, Laredo, McAllen, Falfurias, Del Rio, and Freer to perform. In fact, they drove all over Texas, uh, performing at festivals, 
at rodeos and everything like that. Now, Selena, when she would perform in front of the audience, a lot of times she would ask them for a request if they had a, a special song they wanted her to sing. And since she was all over South Texas, a lot of them had Tejano songs that they wanted her to sing. And at the time, she did not know Spanish. So she thought, how am I going to sing these songs? I don't know Spanish. And so she started to teach herself Spanish because she wanted to be able to connect with her audience. And so this picture here is a picture of Selena late at night. She's on her bus and you can see her sister down here sleeping. And Selena's with her notebook teaching herself Spanish. And you've got some Spanish words kind of in the, in the book as well. Uh, I don't know why Selena didn't speak Spanish, but she and I were very close to the same age and I had the same experience. My parents could speak Spanish, but they didn't teach it to us. And so I used a little bit of my imagination and I thought, well, Selena's parents are the same age as my parents and Selena was the same age as me, so maybe the reason is the same for both of us. So let me read you a little bit more. Why didn't you teach me Spanish? Selena asked her parents. They were quiet for a moment. Then her father said, when we were growing up, we got punished if we spoke Spanish in school. That's why we taught you only English. At the time, it was the language of schooling and success. Selena understood that her parents thought they were helping her, but she really wanted this connection with her audience. I'm going to learn Spanish, she decided, so more people can sing along. At first, Selena learned the songs phonetically, sounding out the words, roll your R's, and remember that the H is silent, she kept reminding herself. So little by little, Selena learned how to, how to speak Spanish, and she started to sing in Spanish too. And when she was 12 years old, she recorded her first song. So that's very young to record your first song, but remember by this time she had been singing for quite a few years. So she recorded her first song and in a room by herself, Selena missed the company of a band and audience. How could she sing without people to dance and hum along? She closed her eyes, tried to put feeling into the music. She repeated the Spanish pronunciations to herself and focused on the song's meaning. But singing in a studio was much different than in front of a live audience. Then she remembered all the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and abuelos who went to her concerts. She wasn't singing for the producers behind the window. She was singing for families and friends. Canta conmigo she silently repeated, imagining the day when they'd all hear her recording and sing along. And sure enough, Selena went on to record many albums. Uh, and when she was 15 years old, she won her first Tejano Music Award. And then she just kept winning the awards one year after another. She did really well. And so I wanna share with you the very last um, images in the book. I love this picture too because this is of the uh, concert that she did in the Astrodome. And you can see there's a lot of purple on the page because that was Selena's favorite color. And there are white roses because white roses were her favorite flower. On February 26, 1995 at the Astrodome in Houston, Selena circled the arena on a horse-drawn carriage. She wore her own purple pantsuit that she had designed. As she waved to the crowd, she thought of her performances at the family dining table, at Papagayos, at the dance halls and rodeos. How different from the Astrodome, and yet how much the same. Her fans cheered when she hopped on the stage. More than 60,000 had gotten tickets to the show. Bitty bitty bum bum, Selena sang. Then she held the mic to the crowd. Bitty bitty bum bum, they repeated. Thousands of families and friends, their heartbeats and their voices united by her song. That concert ended many years ago, but
but her fans are still singing. Every time they hear her voice, they also hear her joyfully shouting, Canta conmigo. And that's the very last pages of my book, Sing With Me, the story of Selena Quintanilla. So as I mentioned, a picture book is, it's like two people are writing the picture book. One person writes the words and one person draws the pictures. Uh, and for this book, I wrote the words, but Teresa Martinez is a person who drew the pictures. Now, whenever you're writing a biography, and a biography is a story of a person's life, you have to do research. So I had to do a lot of research when I was writing my book about Selena. Uh, but even if you're an illustrator, you still have to do research. A lot of people think, oh, you just draw a picture, but no, you still have to do research. For example, Selena had a lot of different hairstyles. Every year she had like a different hairstyle. So one of the things that the illustrator had to research was what did her hair look like when she was 10, when she was 12, when she was 15. Uh, but also just other research for the pictures. So the first picture I'm showing you comes from that page where Selena is recording her first song in the studio. And you can see uh, on the side there, I have um, a, a photograph of Selena's first album cover. And you can see how the illustrator took that photograph and incorporated it into her artwork. It's there at the bottom and it's kind of presented as a cassette tape. And if you look at the photograph and you look at the cassette tape of those album covers, you'll notice that some things are the same and some things are different. For example, the same people are in both pictures. They're wearing the same clothes. They even are sitting the same way in both the photograph and the illustration. But you'll notice that in the photograph of the album cover, the background is very dark and there's also some plants in there. Uh, and in the illustration, uh, Teresa Martinez used a lighter uh, colored background. Uh, the next picture that I want to show you from the book comes from uh, the page that describes the time when Selena uh, won her first Tejano Music Award. And again, the illustrator did some research and she found a picture of Selena when she received that award. And you can see that just like in the photograph, in the illustration, Selena's wearing the same outfit. She's got a black dress on with a little red rose. She's got the same hairstyle. She's even holding the trophy the same way. But the backdrop is a little different again because the illustrator wanted to show just how proud her family was. So they put her family into the illustration. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you was that Many of you probably have teachers that have told you when you write something, you have to do like a rough draft. And then maybe your teacher looks at it or maybe a friend looks at it and says, you know, this part is good, but maybe you can work a little harder on this part. And so you go back and you write again, and that's called revision. And sometimes your teachers say, oh, now it's your second draft. Now write a third draft. And we kind of go, oh no, another draft, because we get so tired of writing things over and over again. Uh, but when you're a professional writer, you, uh, you never have three drafts. You'll have more like 20 or 30. You might even have 50 drafts before you get it exactly the way you want it. The same is true for illustrators. Illustrators have to do drafts too. So this picture that I'm showing you is a picture of when Selena moves to Corpus Christi. And it's in black and white because this was the first draft that the illustrator sent. Uh, and when I saw this, I thought, well, I like how it shows, you know, Selena kind of looking out the window, but I felt like it didn't show enough of Corpus Christi. And a big reason why I wanted to write this book is because I live in Corpus Christi just like Selena, and I visit a lot of young people in Corpus Christi, and I want them to celebrate one of our hometown heroes. So I sent um, Teresa Martinez a bunch of pictures of Corpus Christi. Some that I we even went downtown and took some pictures and some that I got off the internet. And she took those pictures and she did a revision and she did um, 
uh, another draft of the picture. And in the second draft, you can see that, you know, I had sent her this aerial view that showed the L head and the T heads in the Harbor Bridge. And she incorporated that into her art. And you can see that she also showed the seawall and a seagull and people uh, on roller skates, you know, walking along by the water. And so she did a great job of capturing the spirit of Corpus Christi. I was so thrilled with her revised picture. It's one of my favorite pictures in the book. Uh, so just because you're an illustrator, and one thing that illustrators and writers have in common is that they have to do multiple drafts and that even if they're taking information from a photograph or taking information from a factual source, they put a little bit of their own personality into it. I'd also like to invite you to do a little bit of practice as a writer and illustrator. And one of the things you can do is take your favorite picture from the book, ignore the words, just take your favorite picture from the book and write your own words to go with that picture. It can have something to do with Selena, but it can have something to do with somebody else, maybe even yourself. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take a, a favorite sentence or a favorite paragraph from the book, ignore the picture. And this time I want you to draw that sentence, draw that uh, paragraph the way that you envision it. And then you can kind of compare and contrast and see how your vision is uh, similar to or different from mine, you know, the author or Teresa Martinez, the illustrator. Uh, and I also want to invite you to, after you have a chance to read the book, I want to invite you to have a discussion with your family. One of the things that comes out in this book is that the music was a family affair. It was something that Selena did with her family. So maybe you can talk about what are some of the things that you and your family like to do together. My family loved to go camping, we loved to go fishing. Those were some of our favorite activities. Another thing that happens is when Selena's 10, she moves to Corpus Christi uh, from Lake Jackson, Texas. So this was a new city for her. And anytime you're going to a new city or a new place, even like if it's a new school or a new class, it's exciting, but it's also it also kind of makes you feel a little bit nervous. So talk about a time you had to go somewhere new and in what ways was it exciting and in what ways did it make you a little bit nervous? And then a third thing I'd like you to discuss is kind of like, um, kind of like coming off of Selena's desire to learn Spanish and it wasn't easy. She had to study really hard and practice a whole lot. So I'd like you to think about something that you do that you had to learn how to do, that took a while for you to learn. How did you go about learning it? Who helped you? And in what way can you help somebody else behind you learn how to do those things? So I love reading books, and one of my favorite things about reading books is having the book live on after I read it. And the way that I do that is sometimes I write my own versions for the book, or sometimes I just have this, these discussions with my family and friends. So I'd love to invite you to do that uh, after you have a chance to read Sing With Me, the story of Selena Quintanilla. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon.